Yo, yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Afro Wonders. So during my three months of work in Finland, I've already gone through a few videos. The first was of a couple small towns that I lived in and also visited often. The other were the bigger, more well-known cities in Finland. And the one trip I was looking forward to most while in Finland is this one. It's the one to finish Lapland. Now, if you don't know, Lapland is the largest and northernmost region in Finland, and the Arctic Circle crosses across Lapland. So polar phenomena such as the midnight sun and polar night, as well as the northern lights can be seen in Lapland. It's a lot of really cool, unique things you're able to do up there, especially in the winter. So I hope you're ready. Let's go. and I took a flight from Helsinki to Kittila Airport in Lapland. And from there we drove to Levi, which is a ski resort town just 25 minutes from the airport. Levi looks like a really eventful and fun resort, and that was confirmed by some friends of mine who've gone. But we arrived in mid-April, which is the end of the winter season for Levi. So a lot of the attractions were closed and the town was super dead. All the snow on the roads had already melted and the only thing to do was really skiing or snowboarding, which we weren't feeling that. That's the danger of hardly planning your travel itinerary, honestly. Although that's how I usually get down. As a matter of fact, we decided just a day before we left that we were going to Lapland. For real, like 24 hours before our flight, we weren't planning on coming here. <laughs> However, the beauty of hardly planning your travel is winging the shit out of it which I specialize in. And I had a perfect travel partner for winging it. We had a few hours before checking into our accommodation after we arrived. So after realizing everything was closed, we found a random and unique attraction to visit. The Elves Hideaway Village. Now I'll admit, I was skeptical in thinking that the Elves Hideaway Village may just be for kids. But at the end of the day, it's a unique experience that you won't see south of the Arctic Circle, so why not bring out your inner child to play for this one? It's a really cool park, and the best part of it is how it's laid out in the middle of nature trails. I love that. You can start in any direction, and you pass by little elf hideouts, cabins, and structures where elf figures are just chilling how they do. I'm pretty sure most of those elves were wasted by the looks on their faces, but hey, why can't elves party and bullshit when they're not busy bringing us gifts? They had little stables for reindeer, horses, and huskies, although because it's the off season, the huskies weren't around, but we did get to see some reindeer, which I'd never really seen before, and also some horses. Although there was still snow on the ground, I can tell this place would be much more magical and charming in prime winter season, so I would definitely come back. And if you had kids, for sure, it's an easy one. After burning a few hours at the Elves Village, we finally checked into our accommodation, which was one of the highlights of Levy, because we stayed in the Golden Crown Levy Igloos. Now this isn't what I expected or what you would expect when you think of an igloo. These are actually glass domes with 360 views of the surrounding nature. This is probably my favorite accommodation that I've stayed in because during the day you get an incredible sunset, in the morning you get a nice sunrise, and at night you get a very clear look at the stars the whole night. Whenever you open your eyes, it's beautiful. There's much more space inside than I expected and there are curtains you can close if you want to block out anyone's view inside of your igloo. It's interesting, each igloo has certain parts of the glass shaded depending on its relative position to other igloos, so you can keep your privacy. This would also be an amazing place to see the northern lights. We didn't get to see them during our time. It's a little late in the year for it, but if you're there peak times, I'd say between October and March, this would be a great place to stay. Sadly, the critically acclaimed restaurant of the igloo was closed because of Corona. But a new thing with hotel accommodations I found during Corona is that because the restaurants are closed, they'll bring a tray of breakfast to you either in the morning or they'll put it in your fridge the evening before. 
And that was actually really nice. The breakfast was tasty and thoughtful, even though it was pretty light. But you know, it's Corona things. Now the next day we left the igloo craving a little more physical activity than we've had and a little more nature. So we found the nearest national park as we do, which honestly I don't even know how to pronounce the name but I'll try. It's Palas Ulastunturi National Park. <laughs> and we weren't sure what to expect at this park but we were pleasantly surprised when we arrived. First things first, we went into the visitor center which you should always do when you have no idea about the hiking trails you're about to go on. The front desk lady looked at our shoes and immediately said, you're not going to be able to hike any of the mountain trails, but you can do a nice 20 minute flat trail if you'd like. Nah, 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 I can't do that. However, she said, you can do the mountain trails if you rent out snowshoes, to which I thought, what the hell are snowshoes? Apparently, there are these tennis racket looking boots that you strap your shoes into that make it easier to hike in deep snow. And it worked wonders. Before putting them on, I tried walking on the snow and my legs sunk into my hip, into the snow, and I had to crawl my way out of the hole. But after strapping on the snowshoes, your weight's distributed over a greater surface area on the snow, so you don't sink in as easily as you would when all your weights press down on a small amount of space. So we rented out these snowshoes and walking poles for about 20 bucks and we started trekking up the mountain. It was a crazy feeling to be walking up this hill and you see nothing but white all around you. I've always hiked either through forests or even open grasslands, but never anything like this. Honestly, there was no real trail that we walked on. We just saw the peak and we walked in that direction any way that we could, trying to walk wherever the ground was most solid. That was a very difficult hike because even with the snowshoes, we were sinking quite a bit and pulling yourself out takes some effort. Every time we thought we got over the hill to the top, we'd look up and see another climb ahead of us to the next peak. Once you finally did get to the peak, it was a beautiful thing because you're just on a flat hill and you get a 360 view of the surrounding snow covered mountains. It's a flat peak that you can just walk and chill on too. It was super windy and we had to get back down so we couldn't spend too much time at the top. <laughs> Honestly, we pretty much ran down the mountain for the most part. And by the end, so much snow got into my shoes and my toes were frozen numb for like three weeks. But it was worth the experience for sure. It was a really cool national park and I would definitely go back. I'd like to see it in the summertime as well. Now for winging it in Levy, we were having a lot of fun, especially in the off season. Although there were some winter activities that I was really craving for and wanted to partake in while we were there that just weren't available in Levy because it was too late in the year. I searched everything in the area and nothing came up. So I decided to search a little further north and I found something really interesting in this little village three and a half hours north of Levy along the border of Sweden and Finland. So we went north. Before getting to the village of Kilpisjarvi, what I saw during the last hour of our drive got me so excited. Nothing but snow covered mountains alongside a frozen river separating Sweden and Finland. It seemed like a fantasy world and it was incredible how drastically the conditions changed in just three hours of driving. This was more of what I was hoping for on coming to Lapland. The town of Kilpisjarvi was extremely charming as well. It's really a little village and we stayed in the Tundra Holiday Resort, which was a small community of wooden cabins with a sauna inside. There was a restaurant and a few other features we weren't able to take advantage of like ice swimming and a hot tub somewhere around there. But we were able to do some cool things. So the 
next day we woke up and I had my favorite experience that I had in Finland. We went dog sledding with a gang of huskies. I didn't know what to expect and honestly I was so anxious about it but equally excited. They gave us snowsuits, boots and gloves and we met on that frozen Swedish Finnish river and the dogs were so amped up. The guide gave us a quick talk about what to do and it seemed simple. All we had to do was hit the brake by stepping on a stake that drives into the snow when it was time to slow it down. But you're standing up on this wooden sled. Some dog sledding activities, you're actually sitting down and you're partnered up, but this one was really cool because you're just alone. And the best part was, there was nobody else on this tour except me and Pina, so we really had it all to ourselves. It was really cool. Once it was time to ride and I first let go of the brakes, the dogs took off with so much force and something about how I was holding down the brake or holding the handles immediately almost tipped over my sled. I was riding on the one edge for the first five seconds and I was like, damn, we just started and I'm about to fall. But things stabilized and once they did, I was able to really take in the beauty of the surroundings. The wildest thing was that we sled on that frozen river and we rode for two hours up to the point where the three kingdoms of Finland, Sweden, and Norway meet. It's marked by a yellow monument in the middle of the river, but because it's all frozen that time of the year, we could walk around it and we took a break and had some snacks there. There were even some people from other tours or just riding around there on snowmobiles that we just chatted with. The best part about pausing is that we could interact with the dogs and they're super friendly and love the attention. As fun as the sledding was, my favorite part was playing with the dogs when we were all chilling. After riding back to the home point, the dogs were exhausted from four hours of trotting, and honestly, mine were pretty much walking the last hour. By the time we got back, they just laid down in the snow and went to sleep almost immediately. Good night, little dudes. Y'all worked hard. Thank you. The next day we woke up and we had our flight home. But before that, there was just one more thing we had to do. Right across the street from the Tundra Resort was the launching point for snowmobiling. Never done that in my life. So we did a tandem ride through mountain trails, which was a blast. The snowmobile ride actually takes some strength to control it because especially when you're going up and down the hill, it likes to go off track and take its own path. So you really got to manhandle that thing. It was really nice because other than the guide, it was just us. Same for dog sledding, so we could go at our own pace. We rode through remote areas in the mountains where you could find little cabins where people were staying or even just stopping by. Apparently these places are for anybody and whoever stops through can use them. We even found huts where people stop for cooking and congregating in the warmth in the middle of long hikes or ski sessions. Snowmobiling gave us a chance to see parts of the Finnish culture that I never would have thought existed. Every 30 minutes or so, we got off and walked around to explore the surroundings and then hop back on. Being there also made me extremely excited to return to this area in the summer or fall time. Because I can imagine the beauty of these valleys and peaks being covered in colors other than white. I'll definitely be back. This trip was one to remember. We spared no cost and had the time of our lives. The best part is that I can't wait to return for the other seasons. I'd love to see Kilpis Yardvi during the summer solstice. A lot of first time experiences happened during this five day trip from snowshoeing, staying in an igloo, dog sledding, snowmobiling. I always believed, but now I know that every season has something to offer and I wouldn't necessarily discount traveling to a place because of extreme weather. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'm going to see y'all in the next one. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Peace.